it's time for science. And we've been talking about the blood and the heart, which is a circulatory system because it kind of goes around in a circle, starts at your heart, goes down, up and up and up around. So it's the circulatory system because it goes into a circle or a cycle, right? And we've talked about cycles before. We talked about the weather cycle. We've talked like the food chain or the food cycle. So this is another kind of cycle. So what I want you to do, though, I want you to get into your on your science book. OK, and I need you to be on a page 119, if you would, pretty please. OK, so you have this. OK, you ready? All right. So your heart is a muscle. It's made up of a muscle. Isn't that weird? It is a muscle and that thing is pumping all the time. How big is your heart? Your heart is the size of your fist. Now, my fist will be a little bit bigger, but as you grow, your heart will get bigger. Okay? So just think, this is really how big, it's not very big, is it, when you think about it? That's how big your heart is. Wow. A lot going on in that heart, isn't there? How much does the heart weigh? It weighs less than a pound. Okay? So it shows on here maybe about as heavy as an orange. It doesn't weigh barely anything. And, but it does all that neat stuff with all the valves and things like that, which is just awesome. I just loved it. And it says, how does the blood get from the heart to the toe? Well, it flows through blood vessels. It carries the things we need to stay alive. It says, trace the blood vessels with uh, your finger, which you can. So that's what it does. Okay. And I've got a couple of videos we're going to show you. But, you know, if you look at the blue part on here and also when you look on the videos the blue is the blood coming back from the body going into the heart and from there it goes into the lung it grabs oxygen and it comes back and goes through the body so here it's coming through and then it goes back up here and see right here see this little thing right there that's going back up this way this one is going down that way so it kind of comes through and it goes zoops, different ways Okay, again, can you believe how God can do that? So cool, so cool. Would you turn the page, please? Okay, we're not going to do this one. Might do that um, another time, maybe later this week. Can you look at page 121? And it says, how does a cut heal? You, are, you guys have all had cuts, haven't you? And let's find out what happens. Okay, so number one, can we read this together? I'd love it if you could read it together. So have mom and dad listen to make sure you're reading it. Okay, number one, this is how it heals. The skin on the arm is broken and the cut bleeds. So, you know, it kind of opens up. Number two, the cut is washed with water and soap and a bandage is put on the cut. Number three, the body has its own way to stop bleeding and it forms a scab. Right. And that's where the blood starts to um, starts drying up and turns into a scab. The new skin forms under the scab and the scab falls off, which many of you don't let that happen, do you? No, you said you took it off. But just think it's going to be on there. And if you let leave it alone, that scab is going to get smaller and smaller. And the reason is because the skin keeps growing more and more and it goes away. How fun is that? We're not going to design our own bandage. We're not going to go there right now. So, so I love that. That's how a cut heals. Kind of neat. So let's see a couple more things on the heart. And they all kind of are talking about the same thing. But I really, I think the neatest thing is I want you to realize how important your heart is and what it does. It really does a lot of cool stuff. All right. So there's one where the heart sings, <laughs> and it's kind of funny. His voice is strange. His voice is so weird. weird. Oh, that's kind of how it sounds. So I've just got to, I have to have you guys hear it because I just think it's funny. You know, you know me. Okay, here we go. Do, 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 do. Where am I going? Current slide. Thank you. 
I'm your heart. I told you, it's funny. I live inside of your chest. I'm about the size of your fist, and I never take a rest. I'm your heart. You couldn't live without me. I pump the blood that fuels your body. So take care of me, please. The human heart is made up of four major chambers in me. The right atrium and right ventricle are the first two. Now remember what I said about the blue? The blue is the low in oxygen. And sends it to your lungs through your pulmonary artery. The lungs fill blood with oxygen that your left atrium receives and flows through the left ventricle to the aortic arteries. I'm your heart. I live inside of your chest. I'm about the size of your fist and I never take a rest. I'm your heart. You couldn't live without me. I pump the blood that fuels your body, so take care of me, please. I can be more than 100,000 tons in one day, pumping about 2,000 gallons of blood through your body. There is about 60,000 miles of vessels in your circulatory system. I always keep them full. I have four valves that open and close that control the blood through me, the tricuspid, pulmonic, mitral, and aortic valves, you see, I'm your heart, I live inside of your chest, I'm about the size of your fist, and I never take a rest, I'm your heart, you couldn't live without me, I pump the blood that fuels your body, so take care of me, please. I think that is so funny, but I like it. How cool is that? I know. I love the voice. The voice. First, I didn't like it. I thought, oh, no, I like this. So in your heart, do you have a picture of it here? Yeah, in your heart, they call these holes in your heart. They're called chambers. Okay, and this comes through from the body, and it goes up and into the lungs and back through and out through the body because we need oxygen. You need oxygen goes into your blood and it sends it to the rest of your body. And then how many beats did they say? 10, 100,000, excuse me, 100,000 beats. Wow, that is awesome. And 2,000 gallons, 2,000 gallons of blood, that's a lot of blood. Okay, and every, every um, blood vessel, every vein, whatnot, all have blood in it. Isn't that something? It all has blood in it and it's getting pumped. And the only way it goes through is because that heart is pumping it. It's a, not only is it a muscle, remember it's a muscle, but it's also a pump. You know, so it's pumping. And as it pumps, the blood goes through. So the only way that blood can go through is if it's pumping. Isn't that something? Wow. And what did they say? 60,000 miles of, our, of blood vessels. So if you took all of your blood vessels out, ew, and set them end to end, 60,000 miles. Whew. That is something, isn't it? Wow. Our bodies are pretty cool. They are so cool. I just think they're awesome. So anyway, one thing I want to do, and I messed up on something, and I apologize for that. On your muscle book right here, right? You got your muscle book? I don't know where I got this. It is not... 300 muscles. I am so sorry. It is 600 muscles. And as I was writing that 300, I thought it was 600, but then I started doubting myself. So if you can remember to put there 600 muscles there, that would be awesome. Okay. So sorry about that. So anyway, um, so just think, that's a pump. It pumps your heart. That is so cool. Okay. One thing, though, we did talk about cuts. And I want to show you a little thing about how cuts heal. Okay? All right. So I'm going to make myself small. 
All right, and here we go. Today is the big day. No, Squeaks, it's not my birthday, but it is the day that I take the bandage off my elbow. I was riding my bike the other day, and I had a little spill. Luckily, I wasn't hurt too badly, but I did get a big cut on my elbow. So I cleaned out the cut with warm water and soap, and I put on the bandage. But check it out. It's only a week later, and the cut's basically gone. That's because our bodies have a way to make cuts and scrapes get all better or heal even the ones that bleed. Blood travels through our bodies in what are called blood vessels. They're kind of like straws or tubes. Most blood vessels are long and flexible, which means they're able to bend. There are lots of really tiny blood vessels right under your skin, and they can be thinner than a single hair. When you get a cut that bleeds, you end up with a hole in your skin that's deep enough to break some of those tiny blood vessels. It doesn't take long for your body to figure out that something's wrong, and it starts to do something to stop the bleeding right away. Even though blood looks like it's just one liquid, there are actually a few different ingredients in it, like platelets, which look like tiny blobs. They're way too small for you or I to see, but there are lots of platelets in your blood, and they start to fill up the hole the cut made in the blood vessel. They act like a plug to stop any more blood from getting out. Your blood also makes a bunch of stringy fibers, which form a kind of net or web. The platelets stick to this web and to each other, making a lump that completely covers the cut. After a while, the lump dries out and gets hard. We call this brown, hard lump of platelets and fibers a scab. That's true, Squeaks. A scab is a little like a bandage that the body can grow all by itself. Under the scab, your body is hard at work, killing any germs that might have gotten inside your body before the platelets plugged up the cut. Your body also fixes the holes in the blood vessel so that no more blood can leak out, and it starts to close the cut with new skin. As the new skin grows over the cut, the scab starts to get loose. Once enough of the hole is closed, the scab falls off and you're good as new. Now for the tough part. Even though it can be hard to do sometimes, leave your scabs alone. <laughs> Don't pick at them, pull them off, or even scratch them. Because the scab has an important job. It keeps germs that are outside of your body from getting inside your body. If germs get inside your body, they can cause an infection, which can make the cut hurt even worse. And if you pull a scab off, you might rip the skin that's growing over the cut, and your body would basically have to start all over again. After stopping the bleeding, making a scab, and growing new skin, it looks like my body's all done fixing the cut I got. Hey, Squeaks, you want to go for a bike ride? Thanks for joining us on SciShow Kids. Do you have a question about your body or anything else? Awesome. Pretty cool, huh? I think you guys need to know that, so don't pick your scabs. All right? All right, kiddos. I will see you tomorrow. Have a great day, and if you fall, don't pick your scab. All right? Bye.